I am not free. No illusions. Not working in the common sense of the word. Living off the excess of my own wasteful culture. Got scraps? What am I? An animal of so many varieties. I am my own hero. I am my own great nemesis. I am my own shame. As it should be. So many animals I've been throughout the years. Lower middle class, wannabe progressive democratish suburbanite. He was the one with the credit cards. You may have seen him with his shiny new clothes. Someday still he's near my tail. Haven't yet shaken him in his decades of obedience training. If I only would shave and care, I could get a job tomorrow, he reminds me, though he can't look me in the eye to say so any longer. Thankfully, he is defeated, though he insists on lingering, seated on a chair, sewing at the legs. He is baited by electoral politics, though I do my best to keep him distracted. See him wilt in dandy's eyes for the next representative savior. It is so pathetic, and so I give him across the face. Wake up! I just don't believe it anymore. No matter how exciting it pretends to be, I won't spend my political, my spiritual feelings on these opportunists. At best, I'm willing to allow that representative political change provides for openings in machinery, moments of public, of public cultural discourse that can be extended and emphasized and sometimes redirected. Redirected, that is, by the masses themselves as demands redouble and evolve? No, indeed, if this country were even vaguely interested in democracy, interested in actually accurately sampling the population, then for starters, election day would be on the weekend, and it would be a national holiday. Better still, make it a few weeks of voting everywhere, for fuck's sake, instant runoff voting. I digress, with these examples of a kinder, gentler, representative electoral system, my heart lies altogether elsewhere. Don't get me wrong, there may be a place for voting, for democracy between freely federated persons, however, I think it would look a lot different than the fiction to which we are, we are now subject. As it stands, I am suspicious that a great robbery has occurred, that a population has been led, marching proudly over the decades, centuries into an awkwardly assembled circus tent over which hangs a spectacular banner advertising this particularly lofty promise. Democracy. Get yours today while supplies last. Great, whoopee, just get me one of them candidates everybody's talking about. So this great robbery I speak of is a theft of natural and inborn inclination to have a say in events that will in turn affect our daily lives. Democracy. Not as an abstraction, but in direct application in our communities and workplaces. Alright, here's the democracy that terrifies them. Consider a factory floor where the workers have assembled to make decisions. What sort of decisions? What hours do we want to work? What should we pay ourselves? What are we making? Would we rather be making something else? Are we making something useful or something wasteful? You might note in this example the curious absence of ownership and management. However, this is no oversight. This particular group of workers have, have recognized that those institutions are intellectual constructions. That so, so much of the vitality of ownership and management depends that we keep believing they exist and reinforce the mythology with our uninspired complicity. We are now several generations into this arrangement. But it is important to recall that the sa these same institutions routinely employed widespread violence to reinforce their mythology upon our forebears, who rightly and instinctively resisted. Real democracy, when applied in the workplace, would almost certainly lead to the uniform dismissal of ownership and management as pernicious parasites on free creative workers. Therefore, our democratic instincts must necessarily be co-opted and redirected toward bullshit representative electoral politics. Or how about democracy in the community? Where the actual peoples of the community directly represent themselves. Where they gather to vote, debate, consider, block, persuade, and discuss. What might they vote about? Maybe to expel landlords and brutal despotic police forces who do not reflect the community's interests. Maybe to decide to tear up two-thirds of the asphalt in the community and replace it with gardens and paths. Maybe to abolish rents and mortgages. 
I imagine the first real block party in America as empowered people is gathering to dance gleefully around heaps of burning leases and mortgages. These are just speculative examples, certainly. However, the possibility of these kinds of activities, among others, are precisely why vested interests have endeavored to pry the freedom and democracy out of our everyday beating hearts and redirect our needs and interests towards electing representatives. Even as my political history nags me to again dilute my will and pick one, I try to fight through my conditioning and select the candidate they aren't even offering up to us. You. This November, and the months before and after, I'm going to be voting for you. And me. Politicians, parasites, and authorities, be fucking damned.